Dear family, as you know, for the benefit of people appearing prelims this year, we have started Target UPSC Prelims 2020 series. So far, we covered more than 450 important current affairs from the months July 2019 to March 2020. And as promised, the April video will be published this week. To get the feedback on Target series, we created a poll. This would take just one minute of your time to answer the poll and give the feedback. First, open the YouTube app. In the search bar, search for Shankar IAS Academy. And our channel gets displayed here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Then click on the channel and navigate to community tab and there you can see the poll. Here, five options are given ranging from excellent to worst. Choose the option based on your liking. And if you have any extra feedback or requirement, you can post them in the comment section. We request you to answer the poll and give feedback. This kind gesture of yours will boost our morale to work even more harder and to get such many more amazing videos. Before starting today's news analysis, as we all know, yesterday is a very unfortunate day as 20 of our soldiers have attained martyrdom. Let us pray for strength and support to their families. Let us start today's news analysis. This article appeared in opaque page of today's newspaper. It talks about Member of Parliament Local Area Development Scheme or in short MPLATS and why the suspension of this program is not a good move. In this context, know that the union government has suspended this program that is MPLATS program for two years. It is one of the many measures taken by Centre in preparation for a fight against coronavirus and its adverse impact on the economy. The suspension of MPLATS would help government save a total of around 8,000 crores in two years. However, the move to suspend this program has evoked a strong criticism from many quarters, especially from opposition MPs. Firstly, let us discuss MPLATS in brief. See, this program was initially announced by Prime Minister in Parliament in the year 1993. Then the scheme was under the control of Ministry of Rural Development. Later in 1994, the scheme was transferred to Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Even now, this ministry coordinates this program. Here, know that the objective of scheme is to enable MPs to recommend works of developmental nature in their constituencies. This program has main emphasis on the creation of durable community assets based on locally felt needs of the people. Here, the role of MP is limited only to recommendation of works. The fund is directly released to district authority, which has responsibility to sanction, execute and complete the works. Here, so it means MP can only recommend the works. All the execution is taken care by the bureaucracy, that is district authorities. In addition, know that right from the inception of scheme, that is in 1993, durable assets of national priorities, for example, drinking water, primary education, public health, are being created under this mp lets program. So when the program was started, only an amount of rupees 5 lakh was allotted to each MP. Now this amount has been increased to 5 crores per each MP for each financial year. And this MP lets is a scheme and this 5 crore rupees is completely or fully funded by the government of India. That is union government and state government need not share any expenses. And coming to recommendation of works in their constituencies, Lok Sabha members can recommend works only within their constituencies while Rajya Sabha members can recommend works in the state from which they have been elected. And nominated members in both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha can recommend works anywhere in the country. So know this slight distinction between Lok Sabha members, Rajya Sabha members and nominated members. Today's news article mentions that many people supported the suspension move of this program and even demanded the scrapping of the scheme citing corruption as a reason. Here, author note that the reasons cited by the people are unfounded and unrelated and not proved. This is because the scheme undergoes an impartial and meticulous auditing. This is because the second installment of funds is released only when the first installment is fully utilized with no audit objections. Author says that this procedure leaves no place for corruption. The author further states that this mp led scheme has enabled members of parliament to play a leadership role in the developmental process of his constituency and sort out its day-to-day -day problems. Specifically here, author notes that the suspension of this program for two years has dented the vital role being played by members of parliament. And talking about the development in states, the author notes that generally the ruling party channels the public money to particular constituencies based on political considerations. This often lead to skewed development and regional imbalances. 
this type of funding by the state government to appease people and for vote bank politics affects the opposition MLS. This is because generally the ruling party develops the constituencies only where they have won or elected. So in this scenario, this MP-led scheme acts as an antidote to this favoritism by state governments. This is because the scheme provides opposition MPs some chance to cater to the developmental needs of their constituency. She rather notes that the suspension of this scheme has snatched away this limited opportunity. Next, there is a greater need to develop areas inhabited by scheduled caste and scheduled tribe people in order to give special attention for the infrastructure development in such areas. Under MP-led scheme, MPs have to recommend every year works costing at least 15% of 5 crores for the areas inhabited by scheduled caste and 7.5% of 5 crores for the areas inhabited by the ST population or scheduled tribe population. It means 75 lakhs for scheduled caste areas and 37.5 lakhs for scheduled tribe areas. Further, around Rs 20 lakhs of this 5 crores per annum should be allotted for the welfare of differently abled people. So, author says that by suspending this program, the developmental aspirations of all these marginalized communities, that is, scheduled caste people, scheduled tribe people and differently abled people are undermined. In conclusion, author says that this MP-led scheme should be restored as early as possible in order to cater to the developmental aspirations of local people and to iron out regional imbalances caused by political appeasement policies of the government. This is all about this news article in which we have discussed about MP-LED's program and why it is suspended and what are the consequences of such suspension. Let us move on to next news article. This news article is about India's election to UN Security Council. See, we all know that India is likely to be elected as a non-permanent member of UN Security Council for 2021 and 2022. If you recollect, we have elaborately explained about UNSC on 6th June Hindu News Analysis. In today's discussion, let us discuss in brief UNSC, importance of India's membership and what is coffee club. The syllabus is given here for your reference. So coming to UNSC composition, it has 15 members out of which 5 are permanent which are called P5 members and 10 non-permanent members. And also know that UNSC is one of the main organs of United Nations and all the member states of UN are obligated to comply with UNSC decisions. The UN Charter, which was adopted in 1945, vests the primary responsibility for the maintenance and international peace and security with Security Council. Further, the UNSC calls upon the parties to a dispute to settle it by peaceful means and recommends methods of adjustment or settlement. In extreme cases, the Security Council can resort to imposing sanctions or even authorize the use of force to maintain or restore international peace and security. Further, note that the Security Council has a presidency which rotates and changes every month. This presidential post is held by both permanent and non-permanent members in the English alphabetical order of their names. As we just said, the UNSC has five permanent members which are China, France, Russia, UK and USA. And coming to 10 non-permanent members, know that 5 are elected every year by General Assembly for a 2-year term. And for this non-permanent membership, India is expected to be elected for a 2-year term that is 2021 to 2022. And these non-permanent members are elected on the basis of geographical representation. Which means, out of 10 non-permanent members, 5 come from Africa and Asian states, 1 from Eastern European states, 2 from Latin America and 2 from Western European and other states. So this geographical representation and permanent membership was designed based on the global order post-World War, that is in 1945. But if you see, over a period of time, the global order has changed and there has been a demand for reforming the structure and membership of UN Security Council. This is essential mainly because the current UNSC does not reflect the present day geopolitics. Here note that four major countries which are aspiring a permanent seat in expanded UNSC are India, Japan, Germany and Brazil. These four countries often support each other's bid to expanded UN Security Council. In this context, it is imperative to know about Coffee Club. See, this is an informal club comprising more than 40 members and has been holding back reforms in UN Security Council. The prime movers of this club are Italy, Spain, Australia, Canada, South Korea, Argentina and our neighbor Pakistan. While Italy and Spain are opposed to Germany's bid and Pakistan is opposed to India's bid. 
Similarly, Argentina is against Brazil and Australia is opposing Japan's bid to Security Council membership. Now this coffee club has reinvented themselves into a group called Uniting for Consensus. These countries favor increasing the number of non-permanent members without expanding the permanent members of UNSC. In this context, the news article says that India served as a non-permanent member in UNSC seven times and for the upcoming 2021-2022, India remains unopposed for the Asia-Pacific seat. Even though there is no opposition, India needs two-thirds of votes of 193 members of United Nations General Assembly, that is 129 votes. Further, the article says that Mexico is also unopposed in its bid for Latin American seat. And coming to African seat, there is a straight contest between Kenya and Djibouti. The main contest is between Canada, Ireland and Norway for the two seats in Western European and other states. Here the article says that India will have to make a tough diplomatic decision as all these countries happen to be good friends of India and expect India's vote in their favour. Next, let us discuss what is the significance of India's membership here. Here, one important thing to note is Becoming a non-permanent member for eight times will reinstate the India's claim for permanent membership in UNSC. This will also help us to push forward our agendas such as upholding multilateralism, demand for transparency in mandates for UN peacekeeping missions and pushing for UNSC expansion. Further, India will also highlight its long-term concern that is addressing international terrorism by pushing India-led Comprehensive Convention for International Terrorism that is CCIT. India's overall objective during this tenure will be to achieve norms. Here norms stand for a new orientation for a reformed multilateral system. With this we come to end of this news article. We have discussed about UNSC, India's membership and coffee club. Let us move ahead with this news article. This editorial was written by former ambassador of India to Nepal. He talks about the changing Nepal ties with India and consequences. The syllabus is given here for your reference. So if you recollect in the recent past, we have discussed many articles regarding Indo-Nepal ties where we have seen how Nepal is affiliating towards China and how is it affecting India-Nepal relations. Further, we also discussed how Nepal is claiming Indian territory and even approving new maps claiming Indian land as their territory. In this context, the former ambassador of India to Nepal writes how Nepal's global ties evolved in the recent past. If you see, India and Nepal share unique ties of friendship and cooperation as close neighbors which can be identified by an open border and deep-rooted people-to-people context of kinship, relationship and culture. Here, author feels that due to globalization and other factors, Nepal is changing and so is the relationship with India also. It means the change in attitude of Nepal is affecting the Indian-Nepal ties. Firstly, author says that the Benares or the new Varanasi was a keystone of Indian-Nepal ties for centuries. This is because many political leaders of Nepal were resident of Benares and also many Nepalese bureaucrats and politicians had studied at Banaras Hindu University. However, with changing times, this equation has changed now. Now, instead of Varanasi or Benares, Bengaluru is most preferred because Nepali programmers work for Indian tech companies in Bengaluru. This has made Kathmandu Bengaluru sector as one of the most profitable sectors for Nepal Airlines. Second, Nepal has become a democratic country after 240 years of monarchy. But in 2015, when Nepal government adopted a new constitution, they ignored concerns of a few sections of Nepal, which is contrary to their democratic assertions. Even India also tried to explain Nepal and expressed its concerns over new constitution. Here, India's concern was the violent reaction to constitution in the low-lying southern plains of Nepal, which are adjoining India, which we call as Terai region. So what was the concern? See, the people inhabiting in Terai region, who are Madesis and Taru ethnic minorities, expressed their concern about proposed boundaries of new provinces according to new constitution. The new boundaries could lead to their political marginalization in their own country. Here, India's concern was very genuine because the violence in Terai region could have spilled over to India. But Nepal ignored India's concerns which affected Indian-Nepal relations. 
So third major change is in the name of nationalism, Nepalese politicians use anti-India sentiments for their personal gain. If you see in the recent border dispute between India and Nepal, Nepal government has approved a map depicting disputed areas as Nepal territories. In this issue, the political parties used anti-Indian sentiment for their personal gain to hide their incapacities of administration. Further, the Nepal's parliament has also approved the changes in the constitution approving the new borders, that is claiming Indian territory. So there exists a suspicion that this newfound confidence of Nepal is because of Chinese backing. It shows how China's presence in Nepal's politics is increasing. Next, there is lack of progress on 5000 megawatt Pancheshwar multi-purpose project. If you see, this is a bi-national hydropower project to be developed on Mahakali river bordering India and Nepal. Here, both sides will develop infrastructure for mutual benefit. This project is seen as a game changer for Nepal because Nepal's viable hydroelectric potential is somewhere around 40,000 megawatts. But it generates only 1,000 megawatts and imports 600 megawatts from India to match their domestic needs. So these are all the changes discussed by the author while talking about Indo-Nepal relations. Here author compares Nepal's attitude as an angst or a anxiety or fear of a small state. But to India, Nepal appears incorrigible or unreformable. We all think that what Nepal is doing is completely wrong and it cannot be reformed. Next, the author talks about the prevalent societal change in Nepal due to globalization. This societal change happened due to globalization is also affecting India-Nepal relations. First, as a landlocked nation, Nepal depended on Indian imports for many years. And as a result, India played an active role in Nepal's affairs. But what happened in the recent years is, China has gradually gained influence in Nepal by increasing investments, aid and loans. So one side, China's influence is increasing, on the other side, India's influence is decreasing. Here, importantly, China considers Nepal as a key partner in Belt and Road Initiative and wants to invest in Nepal's infrastructure. Second, post-1990, Nepalis began looking for work opportunities globally beyond India. As a result, West and Southeast Asia became major destinations for labor migration. Because of this, nearly one-fifth of Nepal's population were reportedly staying overseas. They account for nearly $8 billion of global remittances to Nepal. Interestingly, this is equal to 30% of Nepal's nominal GDP. In addition, Nepali students began moving to Europe, USA, Australia, Thailand, Japan and South Korea and not just India. This outward movement of students create a lack of common collegiate routes between India and Nepal. So the emerging Nepali leaders in politics, business have not studied in India and as a result they won't have any personal connection with India. This removed a natural bond of previous generations which provided for better understanding between the both countries. So these reasons contributed to the societal change in Nepal and as a result affected or weakened India and Nepal people to people relations. Now a question may arise in your mind that what India and Nepal are moving apart? Here, author says no, because Nepal's linkages with India remain robust. As Nepal's trade with India has grown and according to author, it continues to account for more than two-thirds of Nepal's external trade. This reflects advantages of both physical and societal geography. Secondly, India continues to be the largest aggregate investor in Nepal. In addition, know that the massive under construction Arun 3 hydroelectric project is slated to singly produce as much power what Nepal produces today. This project is a 900 megawatt project expected to be completed in 5 years. Next, author talks about how Nepali rupee is pegged with Indian rupee. This pegging of Nepali rupee with Indian rupee provide a unique stability to the Nepali currency. Moreover, the Nepal's relationship with India, with open borders and Nepal is being allowed to live and work freely, provides Nepal a unique advantage and an economic cushion. This economic cushion provided by India is particularly important in the current context of COVID-19 pandemic. See, this COVID-19 pandemic has seriously affected the remittances of Nepal. See, we have just discussed that 30% of Nepal's GDP is dependent on the remittances from other countries. So, due to COVID-19, these remittances have severely decreased and is affecting Nepal's economy. Here, author notes that neither China or any major economy is going to help Nepal during COVID-19 pandemic. Here, you can infer that India and Nepal relations are unique 
and robust and should be maintained as such for the benefit of both the countries. In this context, author provides few suggestions for re-strengthening of ties with Nepal. According to author, first India should focus on developing its border areas with Nepal. It means better roads, better amenities, etc. This will improve the people to people relations as well as economic advantage to both the countries. Here author notes that India must not forget the past and unique relationship with Nepal. Instead, it must be mindful of realities of changing India and a changing Nepal. So with this we come to end of this news article. In the last 20 to 25 days, we covered Indian Nepal relations extensively. We talked about geography, history of India Nepal relations the current border dispute and our unique ties. In this news article, you might have understood how India and Nepal has unique ties of friendship and cooperation. Let us take up this question, which is based on these two news articles. One of them is about the huge biodiversity in the city of Gauhati of Assam. Though Gauhati is relatively an urban area, it is unique as the people of Gauhati live with several hundreds of flora and fauna. The article has mentioned the term urban jungle for Gauhati. So urban jungle refers to the existence of human beings and free ranging fauna in the same space. Here it is important to note that Gauhati is ecologically rich with almost 18 hills, 8 reserve forests, 2 wildlife sanctuaries besides the river Brahmaputra flowing past its northern edge. In addition, the city also has a Ramsar site at Deepor Bill. Here know that the Ramsar Convention or the Convention on Wetlands is an intergovernmental treaty. This treaty provides framework for the conservation and wise use of wetlands and their resources. In this context, let us see what Montrex record is. Montrex record is a selected wetland sites on the list of wetlands of international importance. The wetlands where changes in ecological character has occurred or occurring or likely to occur are included in this Montrex record. Know that this record is maintained as a part of Ramsar list. So we can simply say that Montrex record is a list of wetlands which need special attention from the authorities to minimize or prevent ecological changes. At present, two wetlands from India are under Montrex record. They are Kheoladio National Park in Rajasthan and Loktak Lake of Manipo, which we are going to discuss in next news article. So coming back to current discussion, know that the Deepor Bill is a permanent freshwater lake in a former channel of Brahmaputra River. It is of great biological importance and is only major storm water storage basin of Gauhati. In the bill, we can see some of the largest concentration of aquatic birds of Assam. In prelims point of view and for the benefit of people who are appearing for prelims 2020, we have tabulated the important species along with their conservation status present in the news articles. You can see Ganges river dolphin here, Chinese pangolin, leopard, black hooded orioli, Asian elephant, gaur or Indian bison. The first column denotes IUCN Red List, second one sites and third one India's Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. With this information, let's get back to the question. Here four pairs of different species along with their IUCN status is given and we are supposed to identify the correctly matched pairs. First one, Ganges River Dolphin, Endangered, Chinese Pangolin, Critically Endangered, Leopard, Vulnerable and Indian Bison, Vulnerable. As you can see, all the four pairs are correctly matched. So the correct answer for this question is option D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Let us take up this question. This question is based on this news article which talks about Lonar Lake and National Environmental Engineering Research Institute and Geological Survey of India. According to news article, the Bombay High Court has asked for the reports of environmental impact assessment of Lonar Lake. This is because the color of the lake turned to pink. If you recollect, on 13th of this month, we discussed in detail about this lake and possible reason for color change. Here know that Lonar Crater Lake is a lake of lagoon in Deccan Plateau in Maharashtra. This lake is a saline and alkaline lake created by meteorite impact about 52,000 years ago. So what is a crater or a crater lake? See crater means a circular depression in the surface of a planetary body. Mostly these are created as a result of impact of meteorites or of volcanic explosion. In this context, a NASA expert has found that there is a glass formation over the surface of the bedrock of Lonar Crater. Here know that the bedrock is basalt rock. This type of glass formation is a new feature not found anywhere else on the earth. So far, it is found only on the beds of craters existing on moon. 
So court ordered the expert team from NIRI that is National Environmental Engineering Research Institute and Geographical Survey of India to examine glass formation also. Here know that NIRI is a constituent body of Council of Scientific and Industrial Research that is CSIR. Here the mandate of NIRI is given here for your reference. Kindly have a look. So let's get back to the question. Here three pairs of lakes along with the places where they are located is given. We are supposed to identify the correctly matched pairs. The first one Loktak Lake situated in Assam. See this pair is incorrect because Loktak Lake is in Manipur and not in Assam. This lake is the largest freshwater lake in northeast India. It is also the only floating lake in the world. In addition know that this lake has been designated as a wetland of international importance under Ramsar convention in 1990. Further it was also listed under Montrex record in 1993. So coming to second pair it is Lonar Lake. This pair is correct as we have just seen that Lonar Lake is in state of Maharashtra. Coming to third pair it is Sambar Lake. This pair is also correct since the Sambar Lake is in Rajasthan. Here know that this is India's largest saline wetland and also a designated Ramsar site. So the correct answer is option D 213 only. Let us take up this news article which appeared in page number 7 of today's newspaper. This article talks about the plight of migrant laborers and the importance of cooperative societies. As we know, the pandemic COVID-19 has affected almost all the sections of society. But the migrant laborers are one of the most affected of all the sections. Because they lost their employment and many migrant laborers lost their lives and most of them came back to their native place. If you recollect, in the last one month, we have discussed multiple articles regarding the plight of migrant laborers. For example, on 15th May, we have discussed about the announcements made by central government for migrant laborers. On 20th May, we talked about flawed stimulus, which also talks about migrant laborers. And on 1st June, we talked about universal basic income, which would help the migrant laborers. Followed by on 10th June, we talked about Jaljeevan mission and how migrant laborers can be used in Jaljeevan mission. We have also talked about expanding Meghnarega to agri activities as well as small scale industries. We also talked about urban employment guarantee scheme. If you combine all these points, you can write a very beautiful main answer regarding the plight of migrant laborers. This article would help one more perspective or one more solution to the plight of migrant laborers. The author of this article says that migrant workers can form cooperatives and unions. She also talks about the advantage of forming cooperative societies. For example, the cooperatives can do collective bargaining which empowers the workers. It stops the exploitation of workers. In addition, cooperatives can give collective services if they are given a chance to expand. For example, a group of tailors can come together and form a contract with a garment factory. And if these cooperatives are funded and assisted by the government, we can expect a lot of cooperatives formed by the migrants. In addition, author also says that, so far, Magnarega offered a way of alleviating the problems of migrant workers. But this is only a short-term occupation for laborers and provides only seasonal employment. So authors suggest that the Magnarega should be restructured and the funds of Magnarega can be used to enable women or artisans to market their domestic products. So this is all about this news article. So one novel point discussed in this news article is forming of cooperatives by migrant workers. Now let us move to last segment of today's news analysis that is practice questions discussion. The first question is based on MP LADS program that is member of parliament local area development scheme. Three statements about MP LADS are given and we are supposed to identify incorrect statements. The question says with reference to MP LADS scheme consider the following statements. Statement 1 it is fully funded by government of India. Yes this statement is correct. Coming to statement 2 it comes under the control of Ministry of Rural Development. No, this statement is incorrect since the scheme is administered by Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Statement 3. Under this scheme, the MPs must recommend works that give special attention for infrastructure development of areas inhabited by scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Yes, this statement is also correct. As we discussed, MPs have to recommend every year works costing at least 15% of MP LADS fund for scheduled caste areas and 7.5% for scheduled tribe areas. So the correct answer for this question is option B, 2 only, since we are supposed to identify incorrect statements. Next, let us take up this mains question. This is a previous year mains question appeared in GS2 paper of 2015 UPSC exam. The question says, discuss the impediments India is facing in its pursuit of a permanent seat in UN Security Council. 
then it was a 12.5 marks question and word limit is 200 words we request you to write this question in 150 words if possible or within 200 words so in intro you can talk briefly about unsc or permanent members or you can talk about why india is entitled to a permanent seat in unsc then you can write all the points we have discussed in today's news article for example you can talk about g4 countries followed by coffee club or uniting for consensus group which are holding the reforms in UNSC. You can talk about China acting as an obstacle and add your own viewpoints and end with a proper conclusion. Let us take up one more mains question. This is a practice question. The question says India and Nepal must act according to the changing scenarios, keeping in mind the past and the future. Discuss. This is a 10 marks question and word limit is 150. First, you can talk about changing scenarios like Nepal embracing globalization and border disputes Nepal tilting towards China, etc. And importance of Nepal amidst rising tensions between India and China. You can also talk about unique ties of friendship and cooperation and people-to-people -people links and open borders, etc. But main focus of the question should be how India and Nepal should act. Today we have talked about how India and Nepal can move ahead even in the changing scenarios. And you can end with a proper conclusion. Dear viewers, kindly answer these main questions and post them in the comment section. We will get back to you with appropriate feedback within short time. With this, we conclude today's news analysis. If you find this session resourceful, click on the like button and show your appreciation in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay home, stay safe.